Hey, what is going on everybody? It is Rob, aka The Diligent Dev, and welcome to part four of the Tinder style movie night picker. Now in this section, we're actually gonna be getting movies into our project and allowing the users to thumb up or thumb down those movies. And we're also gonna be checking to see if their partner has any matches that they have. So let's jump over to the computer and get right into it. Okay, so here we are over at the computer and I have our project all loaded up in Visual Studio Code and a development server running. Now to get movies into our project, we're going to be using an API from the movie database. You can find it at themoviedb.org. You're gonna go here, go ahead and sign up for an account. So pause the video if you don't already have one. And then once you've signed up for an account, you'll get this little account icon. We'll click on it, we'll go to settings, then we will go to API and you'll see once you've requested an API key, you'll have it down here. Then we'll go to their API docs. And they've got a lot of different endpoints in here that you can use, but the one that we're going to be using is the discover endpoint. And this will give us a bunch of movies that we can display to our user, and we can go ahead and we can sort them by average rating so that we can show the highest rated movies first to our users. So if we scroll down, we can see we can click on try it, and I'm gonna go back and I'm gonna grab my API key. Come in here and paste it in there. We're gonna scroll down. I'm going to go to include adult and I'm gonna set this to true. We'll start on page one and everything else looks pretty good. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to hit send request and if we come down, we see we get a bunch of results. You'll see that there are 10,000 total results and 500 pages, and they do page this data, so we're on page one, and each page returns 20 results, and we see that we have a bunch of information about each movie. So for now, what I'm gonna do is I'm going to put this off to the side, and we're going to keep that open because we're gonna copy that API request that I just made. So that way we can use it inside of our project, but we need to work on some other things before we start to do that. So let's head over to SRC, Views, and Home. And the way that I envision our home is that it's going to have a single card on it. Inside of that card, there will be a movie poster, a title, and the description of the movie. And then we'll put a thumb up and thumb down button to allow the users to like or dislike that movie. Now, in order to do that, let's go ahead and remove this image. We'll also remove this component and we will replace it with a data prop. Inside of this data prop, we're going to have a property called is loading. And we will use this to display a loader when we're fetching movies from the database. And we'll initially set this to false. Next, we're going to need something to hold the movies that we capture from the database. So we're gonna say movies and just set that to an empty array. And then we need to know which movie we are displaying on the screen at any given time. So we're gonna say current movie and we're gonna set that equal to an empty object. And then to keep track of which movie we are on, we're going to set something called the current index. And I'm just gonna set that to zero. Next, we're gonna to need to create our method to grab the movies from the database. So I'm going to add a methods property. And inside of here, we're going to create a method called fetch movies. And then we're gonna pass it a page number. Now we're gonna to have to make this asynchronous because we will be awaiting an Axios call. So up here at the top, we're going to import Axios from Axios. We're gonna say const res equals await axios.get. And then I'm gonna head back to the open movie database and copy that URL from the try it out request that we made. And I'm gonna go ahead and paste it in there. Now at the end here, we need to do some string interpolation. So what I need to do is go back here and I'm gonna do a back tick. And then this very last query parameter, we're gonna say dollar sign page to pass in the page. I'm gonna hit Alt Shift F to format, and then I'm gonna go ahead and close this down. And then below our request, I'm going to say if res.data and also res.data.results.length is greater than zero. Then we'll say this.movies 
equals res dot data dot results. Another thing that we're going to want to do is keep track of which page the user is on. So that way, when they log into the system, they're not seeing the same movies over and over again, and they're starting from square one. So what we're going to do is we're going to head over to store modules users and on state, we're going to put a new property and we're going to call this movie API page and we're going to set that to one because when a new user signs up, that will initially be one next down and set user data. We're going to say state dot movie API page equals payload dot movie API page. Then we're going to add a new mutation called set movie API page. We'll pass it the states and payload. And we'll just say states dot movie API page equals payload. And then to call that mutation, we need to add a new action called sets movie AP API page. We'll pass it the context and the page number. And then we'll just say context dot commit. And we're going to be we're going to be committing this mutation. And then we will pass it the page number. I'm going to go ahead and save everything. Next, we need to go to our sign in page and find our dispatch. So we have set user data here. And what I'm going to say is movie API page. And we're going to say user data dot movie API page. And if it is not present in our database, we're just going to say one and we'll go ahead and save everything. And it looks like I have a typo. So I'm going to go ahead and fix that. And now we'll save everything and we should be good to go. Next, we'll head back to home.view and under our methods property, we're going to create another property called computed. And what we'll put down here is just going to make it a little bit easier for us to write our code. So the first one will say movie results length. And we'll return this dot movies dot length. The next computed property we'll do is user movie API page. And we'll return this dot dollar sign store dot state dot movie API page. Next, we'll do another computed and we'll just say auth user ID and we'll use this to grab the logged in user ID. So we'll say return this dot dollar sign store dot state dot user dot ID and we missed a comma here and then we'll do another computed prop and call it partner ID and we'll return this dot dollar sign store dot state dot user dot partner ID and then the last one we're going to do is we're going to return a movie image and what we're going to use this for is to return the movie poster. So we're going to say return this dot current movie dot poster underscore path. And if we have that, we're going to return HTTPS image dot TMDB dot org slash T slash P slash W 500 slash dollar sign this dot current movie dot poster path. And if that doesn't exist, we're just going to return a blank string. Hit Alt Shift F to format that. And now our computed properties are all ready to go. Next, we'll need the logic for our thumbs up and thumb down clicks. Since we'll each need to increment the current movie slash index, we'll add an increment method so we don't duplicate the code. And in this method, we'll have to check if the movie is the last on the current page returned from the API. And if it is, we'll need to fetch more and save the page number in the users collection. So let's scroll up here to our methods and below our fetch movie, we'll create a new one and we're going to say async increment current index. 
The first thing we're going to do is see if the movie is on the last, the current movie is on the last page of the API results. And to do this, we're going to say if this.currentIndex is equal to this dot movie result length minus one, then we know that we have to go and grab some new movies. So we're going to say const new page equals this dot user movie API page plus one. The next thing we're going to do is save the page in the users collection. So we need to import DB up here at the top. So we're just going to say import DB from main. Then down here, we're going to say await DB dot collection. We're going to reference the users collection. Then we're going to get the documents for the logged in user. So we're going to say this dot auth user ID dot updates. And what we're going to do is pass in the movie API page and set that equal to new page. Alt Shift F2 format that. I'm going to go ahead and close this down so we can see this code a little bit better. After we've saved it, we need to dispatch to the store to let it know that there's a new movie API page. So we're going to say this dot store dot dispatch. We're going to say user slash set movie API page. And we're going to pass in the new page. Then we need to fetch new movies. So we're going to say this dot fetch movies and pass in the new page. And then the last thing we need to do is set the current index back to zero because we want to start on the first movie on the new page. Now, if this is not the last movie on the page, we need to increment the current index and also set the current movie equal to this dot movies and pass in the current index. And I'll go ahead and save everything and our increment function should be good to go. The next thing we need to do is work on our thumb up and thumb down. So I'm gonna create two new functions and I'm gonna say async thumbs up and async thumbs down. Now the thumbs down is a little bit easier, so we'll work on that one first. And we're just gonna say await oh, this dot increment current index. And that's all we have to put for thumbs down. Now the thumbs up is going to be a little bit more tricky. So what we're gonna do is grab two references, one for the user document that's logged in and another for the partner document that the user is partners with. So we're gonna say let user ref equal db dot collection we're going to reference the users collection and then we're going to grab the documents and we'll say this dot auth user ID to grab the user document. Then we're going to say let's partner ref equal DB dot collection and we're going to reference the users collection again and then we're going to grab the doc associated with this dot partner ID. The next thing we're going to do is save the movie the user just liked in a sub collection off of the user's document called liked movies. So we're going to say await oh, user ref dot collection liked movies dot add. We're going to pass an object and then I'm going to do some object destructuring to say dot 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 this dot current movie. Alt Shift F2 format that. So now that we have that out of the way, we need to check to see if our partner has also liked that movie. And if they have, we're going to save it in another sub collection off of each partner called matches. So to do this, we're going to first check to see that they do have a partner ID. Then we're going to say const partner liked snapshot and we're going to set that equal to await partner ref dot collection we're going to look at the same liked movies collection dot where the id is equal to 
this.currentMovie.id, and then we're going to just say dot get. Hit Alt Shift F to format that. We'll come back here, and then we're going to say if partner like snapshot dot empty, and we're going to put an exclamation point in front of that. So if it is not empty, we're going to go ahead and save this in another sub collection off of each user, both the user that's logged in and the partner called matches. So we're going to say await user ref dot collection. We're going to call it matches. And then we're going to say dot add. And we're going to pass in this dot current movie. And we did some object destructuring there. And then we're also going to do the exact same thing. So I'm going to copy this line. And the only thing we're going to change is we're just going to also save this in the partner ref. Hit Alt Shift F2 format that. And then once that is all done, underneath this if statement, we're just going to say this dot increment current index. So just to recap, we grab both the user and the partner. We save this in the users liked movies. Then we also check to see if the partner existed, checked their liked movies to see if they had also liked this movie. And if they did, we're gonna go ahead and save the match in both of their sub collection called matches. So I'm gonna go ahead and save everything. Then we'll head up to the template. And inside of our home div, we're going to do a V card. We're going to set a loading property on it and set that equal to is loading. Then we're gonna do a class. We're gonna say MX auto MY-12 and we're going to give it a maxed width of 600. Inside of the card, we're gonna do a template and we're gonna say slot equals progress. Inside of here, we're going to do a V progress linear with a color equal to primary, a height equal to 10, and we'll give it a property of indeterminate. I'm gonna hit Alt Shift F to format. Next, we're going to do a V row. And inside of our V row, we'll do a V call. We're going to give it an MD equal to six. And inside of here, we're going to do a V image. And we're going to set the source equal to movie image. Outside of this V call, we'll do another V call. We're going to give this one MD equal to six and class equal to MT dash five to give it some margin on the top. Then we're going to say V card title. And inside of here, we're gonna do some text interpolation and say current movie dot title. Below this, we'll do V card text. We'll do a V row. On the V row, we're going to do a line equal to center and class equal to MX dash zero. Then we'll do a div and inside of our div, we'll say current movie dot overview outside of our v card text we're going to do v card actions and this is where our buttons are going to live so we're going to do another v row in here we're going to give it a class of d flex justify space around then inside of this, we'll do a V button. We're going to give it a color of green. And we're going to say on click, thumbs up. And then we'll do another V button in here. We'll give it a color of red. And on click, we will say thumbs down. Now inside of our buttons, we need to add an icon. So we're gonna say V icon. And then in the thumbs up one, we're gonna say MDI dash thumb dash up. And we're gonna just go ahead and copy this 
And inside of this button, we'll just do a thumb down. And it looks like our template is out of place. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to cut this. I'm gonna come back up to template. And right after this V progress linear, I'm gonna go ahead and close the template. Alt Shift F to format that. And then down here outside of our V card, I'm going to do another V row. And then we're gonna do a V call inside of that. And we're gonna give this call a class of text center. And then we're going to give our attribute to the movie database. So I'm gonna say powered by the movie database. So we'll say A, go ahead and put this in there as the text on our anchor tag. And then I'm gonna go back to the movie database.org and copy the URL out of there and just go ahead and paste that in. And then in order to call our API when the page load will come down here and right above methods, I'm just gonna say created and we're just gonna call this dot fetch movies and put a comma there and go ahead and save everything. Oh, and one more thing we need to do is pass in the page. So we're gonna say this dot user movie API page. And we'll go ahead and save everything again. And then I'm gonna go ahead and log in. It doesn't look like we're getting anything back. So what I'm gonna do is open up the view dev tools. And we're gonna go ahead and look in here. And if we drill down into our home, it'll show us our state on it. And it doesn't look like we have a current movie. So I believe in fetch movies, when we get here, what we need to do is set this dot current movie equal to this dot movies and zero. And I'm gonna go ahead and save everything. And now we see we're getting something. So let's go ahead and make this a little bit bigger. And it looks like our card is a little off. This image is a little bit too big. So let's go up to our template and see what's going on here. And it looks like the reason it's probably displaying like this is because we've set a medium width and not a small one. So if I was to come here and enlarge this, you see that we're getting our card, it's looking really good. We have our artwork to the left-hand side, the movie title and the overview and our thumb up and thumb down buttons. And if we're to click a thumb down, we see we go to the next movie. Let's go ahead and click a thumb up and we see we've gone to the next movie, but there was a little bit of a delay on it. And that's because it saved some information. So if we go over to Firepace and we take a look now off of this user, we have a liked movies sub collection and we have the all the movie data from that movie that we just liked. Now, if we go back to our sign in or to the root path, if we go back to the root path and we sign in with our test at test.com user. We'll go ahead and dislike this one and we will like this one. And it looks like we got some sort of an error here. So I'm gonna to go to the inspect and it looks like we're getting a Firebase error on a document call. It expected to be a non-empty string, but an empty string was found. So let's go back, go into our function and take a look to see what's going on here on a liked. And it looks like I'm getting an error on this partner ID right here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just going to cut this and we're gonna move it to here. I'm gonna go ahead and save everything. And what this is telling me is that there is no partner ID associated with this logged in user. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go to add partner. I'm gonna search for myself. I'm going to add as a partner. And then I'm going to go back to our homepage. I will dislike this first one. I will like the second one. And we see that it's gone incorrectly. But if we go back to Firestore, you'll see that off of our user here, 
we do not have matches and matches should be a sub collection showing up here. So let's try to figure out exactly why that's occurring. So after looking at this, I figured out that on our partner ref here, I had omitted the S, so it was just user instead of users, and that's why it was not finding our partner collection. So I went ahead and fixed that and changed it, and then I went and added the exact same movie, and you'll see that off of both users, we now have liked movies and matches on both of them with the movie that we both selected. So that's gonna go ahead and wrap it up for this video. In my next video, we're gonna be focusing on the matches page. So if you haven't already, make sure you subscribe to the channel and enable notifications so you get notified when that video comes out. If you have any questions, comments, or concerns, go ahead and leave them in the comment section below. And until next time, happy coding.